Hello, welcome to Morning Devotions on June 4th, 2021. I'm Evan Gartner, Senior Pastor at Our Shepherd Lutheran Church in Birmingham, Michigan. It's a joy to be with you today, this Friday, as we continue to rejoice that the sun rises and that the light of Christ shines across the world as the good news is shared. We start with the words from Psalm 61. Hear my cry, O God, listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth I call to you when my heart is faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I, for you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. Let me dwell in your tent forever. Let me take refuge under the shadow of your wings, for you, O God, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. Prolong the life of a king. May his years endure to all generations. May he be enthroned forever before God, appoint steadfast love and faithfulness to watch over him. So I will sing praises to your name as I perform my vows day after day. The line that is in Psalm 61 that I think reminds me why I believe in God is this one. It says, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. The Holy Spirit has convicted my heart to help me recognize that I am not everything. I am not all that there is. There is more than me. There is God. There is a rock higher than I. When I stand and the waves threaten me, if I stand on my own strength, my own virtue, my own integrity, I will sink. I need to stand on something higher than me. And I find that anything that I try to stand on that is made with human hands falls apart. Any big institution, any big nation, any grand enterprise that is filled with such optimism, but is entirely made and designed for human hands, purposes, it falls. We are sinners. Let me stand on a rock higher than I. Let me stand with you, God. You are my rock, my refuge, my ever-present help in times of trouble. Let me stay in your tent forever. Let me dwell with you, God. When I explain to someone why I believe in God, and it becomes more and more a struggle for some people. They're like, you know, they look at the world and think, what well, does God matter? Because we think with our phones or devices, we can have everything at our fingertips. We don't need some higher power to give us the answer. I said, well, look at that device. What news does it deliver to you? I need God. I need with acknowledgement something more than me. I cannot solve the world on my own. Psalm 61. Here's the verse I want you to think about now. It's verse 2. Lead me to the rock higher than I. That's my prayer for everyone, that God would lead them to the rock that is higher than themselves. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Remember also your creator in the days of your youth, before the evil days come and the years draw near of which you will say, I have no pleasure in them. Before the sun and the light and the moon and the stars are darkened and the clouds return after the rain. In the day when the keepers of the house tremble and the strong men are bent and the grinders cease because they are few. And those who look through the windows are dimmed. And the doors in the street are shut. And the sound of the grinding is low and one rises up at the sound of the bird. And all the daughters of song are brought low. They are afraid also of what is high and terrors are in the way. The almond tree blossoms. The grasshopper drags itself along. And desire fails. This man is going to his eternal home, and the mourners go about the streets. Before the silver cord is snapped, or the golden bow's bowl is broken, or the pitcher is shattered at the fountain, or the wheel broken at the cistern, and the dust returns to the earth as it was, and the spirit returns to God who gave it. Vanity of vanity, says the preacher, all is vanity. Besides being wise, the preacher also taught the people knowledge, weighing and studying and arranging many proverbs with great care. The preacher sought to find words of delight, and uprightly he wore, wrote words of truth. The words of the wise are like goads, and like nails firmly fixed are the collected sayings. They are given by one shepherd. My son, beware of anything beyond these, of making many books. There is no end, and much study is a weariness of the flesh. The end of the matter. All has been heard. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God will bring every deed into judgment with every secret thing, whether good or evil. So this is the end of Ecclesiastes, and it's reminding us 
Remember your creator in the days of your youth, before the evil days come. Remember that moment when you could trust in God before the evil days come, and that becomes harder to see. Have faith in that which you no longer can see, but you know is true, even when the things that you can't see with your eyes seem so overwhelming. The end of the words are important. All has been heard. Fear God. Keep his commandments. This is the whole duty. Trust in God. Trust in God. And keep his commandments. There's lots of evil in the world. But you, yourself. God is leading you to a rock higher than yourself. Fear God and keep his commandments. Devotional reading today from Peter Chrysologus. You see how Jesus gives full scope to death. He grants free reign to the grave. He allows corruption to set in. We're talking about Lazarus and why he delays. He allows the realm of darkness to seize his friend, drag him down to the underworld and take possession of him. He acts like this so that human hope may perish entirely and human despair reach its lowest depths. The deed he is about to accomplish may then clearly be seen to be the work of God and not of man. Jesus waited for Lazarus to die, staying in the same place until he could tell his disciples that he was dead. Then he announced his intention of going to him. Lazarus is dead, he said, and I am glad. Was this a sign of love for his friend? Not so. Christ was glad because their sorrow over the death of Lazarus was soon to be changed into joy at his restoration to life. I am glad for your sake, he said. Why for their sake? Because the death and resurrection of Lazarus were a perfect prefiguration of the death and resurrection of the Lord himself. What the Lord was soon to achieve in himself had already been achieved in his servant. This explains why he said to them, I'm glad for your sake not to have been there, because now you will believe. It was necessary that Lazarus die, so that the faith of the disciples might also rise with him from the dead. Let's close now with this prayer. Almighty God, by your great goodness, mercifully look upon your people that we may be governed and preserved evermore in body and soul. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Rejoice. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad in it.